Love it. And uh, yeah, neighbors, gifts, yourself. It's lovely. So participate. Um, and there's going to be there's more information about it in your worship booklet. So be sure to check that out if you are interested. We have Trump or Treat that is coming up. Does anybody remember the date for Trump or Treat? Oh, I'm seeing October 24th. I heard it over there. Awesome. I know you marked it on your calendar. <laughs> uh, at 6 o'clock here at Asbury, it's always such a special event, and we want to continue to make it a special event. So we want, we hope that you come and participate. And do we still need cars, Ms. Heather? Sure. So sure. We're feeling pretty good, but hey, we could use some, we, we really could use some more cars. But it always makes it more fun. I think we have 17, We have 17. Oh, we'd love to have 20. Oh, look at that. Only three more. Is that you? I don't know. <laughs> Listen to that spirit. Uh, and of course, we have our monsters who, I, I didn't clear this with Miss Heather, but I, I named our monsters. Uh, I, hope, I hope she's okay with that. I named them Oliver and Lucy. So Oliver and Lucy are at um, the Welcome Centers here and uh, down by the sanctuary as well. So uh, they, they've got, they, they're filling up their, their little bellies, and, but they could use some more. So we are, thank you for, for filling them up. <laughs> Give them a place to go. We do have much, many more announcements which can be found in your bulletin, which this week can be found on pages 10 or 11 through 13, as well as on our website as always, asveryweb.org. And you can find our next steps, which this week can be found on page 10, as you prayerfully discern how God is calling you to put your faith into action based on today's worship experience. Generosity begins with gratitude. When we see all that God has done for us and are grateful, it opens us to be generous as God is generous. And you may see some uh, faces you're not used to seeing here today, and that's because we have our ASP team here. It's ASP Sunday, and I'm going to invite Carlton to come up, and he's going to introduce our ministry moment. So good morning. Yes, ASP, Asbury Service Project. We're back up and running. This is the 49th year for this ministry here at Asbury. Right? Yeah, that's a good thing. Many, many folks who have come before us that are, that are part of the program now have, have kind of built this up and made it what it is. We are happy to be back. So last Sunday, we had the opportunity to serve dinner at the Christian Shelter. Uh, in a couple weeks, we're going to be building a wheelchair ramp over near Cambridge. So it, it, all the preparations have begun. Last year, last June, we traveled to Tennessee and spent a week in mission doing home repair. And we have a couple folks that are going to share their story here with you today. Phoebe and Cameron, come on up. Hi, my name is Cameron Mason. I'm a sophomore, and this past summer was my first time going on the Asbury Service Project. Um, it ended up being some of the best days of my life, and I have so many amazing memories from it. My group, which consisted of Pastor Tom, Mr. Dave Abbott, who was a volunteer from Pennsylvania who came with us, Ms. Shannon Forrestal, Ben Canada, Tyler Ball, and Sydney Cropper. We were assigned to a project called The Village, there were three generations living on this property, um, all working together to raise this four-year-old named Killian, which he was probably like the most amazing four-year-old I've ever met. He was so funny and like just so full of life. We spent most of our time on the project with him, but we did get like a lot of work done too, I promise. 
He had a little green hammer that he would carry around with him all the time, and he would help us take out everything that we needed, and he was just amazing on the project. Um, we did what's called a hug. So we took off the siding and the insulation and any plywood paneling that was underneath of all those things, and we helped replace it all. But this project takes about six weeks, so we only got done a small portion of it, but from the small portion we did get done, the family was so, so, so grateful. Um, I think they were grateful for the work we provided them, of course, but also just like the memories we gave them. I don't think Killian, Miss Hilda said that Killian didn't really like talk to people outside of their family, but from the first day we were on the work site, he just immediately opened up to us and followed us around the rest of the week. None of us were allowed to be out of his sight. Um, I'll forever be grateful for the Asbury Service Project because it's given me so many good memories and I can't wait for the next three years. Hi, I'm Phoebe, I'm a sophomore. Last year was really special. We were coming off of the pandemic and that was kind of rough. We didn't get to do a lot of the things that um, we love to do, like our ASP mixers, where we just kind of hang out and get to know each other a little better. And of course, our pancake breakfast. But um, being able to go on the trip and do the ramp builds and serve at Christian Shelter was really special. It was really special because I learned why we say that ASP is a relationship ministry. It's about the work that we do. It's about um, serving people and improving their lives and making their houses warmer, safer, and drier. But it's also about getting to know the homeowners. It's about talking to them and hearing about their lives and, you know, smiling with them and tearing up with them and knowing that we give them the opportunity to be seen and heard and helped and that is really, really important to them. And as a team, we also get to do that for each other. We get to work side by side and build a community and build a family, really. When you've been on a week-long trip out in the middle of nowhere with no cell phones, with your ASP team, you get pretty close pretty fast. <laughs> ASP is designed so that you're interacting with the people around you and you're getting to know and enjoying spending time with people that you might never have interacted with otherwise. And that's what ASP means to me. Um, in this upcoming year, I'm really excited to be, you know, getting back into that. Um, we are looking forward to future ramp builds and serving at Christian Shelter and, you know, our trip this summer. We're also looking forward to getting back to Pancake Breakfast. I'm really excited for that. And I know everyone else is too. Um, and just, I'm glad to be back with the team and with the support of our congregation. Thank you. Thank you guys, that was awesome. Um, and now, unless you have some, you don't have anything else you need to say, right? Okay, I want to invite everyone to uh, take part in that other thing that we love to do around here is pass the peace of Christ with one another.
ASP team take that up before we... If the, for ASP Sunday, something that we used to do a long time ago is that the ASP team used to uh, sing, do the, do the music for the service. And we're dipping our toe into getting back to that. So I want to invite the team who's, who is here, all the team members who are here, if you could come up to the front, like we talked about on Wednesday, or we talked about before. So come on up. You can fill between here, or you can fill here, but come on up. Come on up, everybody. <laughs> oh, this is great. What a beautiful sight. We're going to make a joyful noise. Let's see. Do we get them all? All right, good. <laughs> or you can come up here and lead them. <laughs> I think that's as close as they're going to get. That's good. <laughs> yeah. streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name when I'm found in the desert place. The walk through the wilderness. Blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour Shining down on me when the world's all as it should be. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name on the road marked with suffering. There's pain in the offering. Blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour. you 
First scripture this morning is Job 23, verses 1 to 9 and 16 through 17. Then Job answered, Today also my complaint is bitter. My hand is heavy because of my groaning. Oh, that I knew where I might find him, that I might come even to his seat. I would present my case before him and fill my mouth with arguments. I would know the words that he would answer me and understand what he would say to me. Will he plead against me with his great power? No, but he would take note of me. There the righteous might dispute with him. So would I be delivered forever from my judge? Look, I go forward, but he is not there, and backward, but I cannot perceive him. When he works on the left hand, I cannot behold him. He turns to the right hand, and I cannot see him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second lesson is 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 to 15, the New Living Translation. Remember this, a farmer who plants only a few seeds will get a small crop, but the one who plants generously will get a generous crop. 
You must each decide in your heart how much to give, and don't give reluctantly or in response to pressure. For God loves the person who gives cheerfully, and God will generously provide all you need. Then you will always have everything you need and plenty left over to share with others. As the scriptures say, they share freely and give generously to the poor. Their good deeds will be remembered forever. For God is the one who provides seed for the farmer and then bread to eat. In the same way, he will provide and increase your resources and then produce a great harvest of generosity in you. Yes, you will be enriched in every way so that you can always be generous. And when, you, when we take your gifts to those who need them, they will thank God. So two good things will result from the ministry of giving. The needs of the believers in Jerusalem will be met, and they will joyfully express their thanks to God. As a result of your ministry, they will give glory to God, for your generosity to them and to all believers will pr prove that you are obedient to the good news of Christ, and they will pray for you with deep affection because of the overflowing grace God has given to you. Thank God for this gift, too wonderful for words. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning. I'd like to invite the children to come up for a children's message. Hi. You girls don't have far to walk today, do you? <laughs> right there. Hi, Emma. Kenzie and Sadie and Emma. Emma has a red teddy bear. Hi. I like teddy. There you go. Hey, Avery. Come on up. How are you? Yep, you got right on the edge there. That's good. Okay, let me get all my things out here. Oh. So we're going to play a little kind of a game sort of thing this morning, okay? Miss Heather has some cards here. There should be ten. One, two, three, four, five, eight, nine, ten. There are ten, okay. And one of my cards is a joker. You see him, the joker? Okay, so this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to shuffle these ten cards, and then I'm going to lay them out on here, and you guys get one chance to pick the joker. Okay? You think you can find them? Shuffling, shuffling, shuffling. Shuffling, shuffling. They look confident. They can find the joker. Okay. All right, here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right, there's all ten cards. All right, we ready for the game to begin? You're feeling like you can find that joker just like that? <laughs> Maybe not? Okay, let's talk about this for a minute then. Okay, so what, is, what, do you, what are your chances to find it on the first try, do you think? Are they really great? No, not so much. You've got like a one in ten chance to find the joker, and if you find the joker, everybody gets a prize. But you have a nine in ten chance to not find him, and then nobody gets a prize. Does this sound like a fun game? Mm, I don't know. Okay. I think this game would be, maybe it would be more fun if you had a little help to find the Joker. You think it would, would that help? Okay. Well, I'm going to help you, know, because I love you also. Let's pick that one. Try that one. Go ahead. Go ahead, Sadie. Is it him? Mm -hmm. Woohoo! You got the Joker! Awesome! Okay, so everybody gets, and I was, I was really excited to pass these out today. Spider rings, just because they're fun. You like spider rings? Okay, spider rings for all. We found the joker. Okay, so in our Bible lesson for today, the disciples say to... Do you want a purple one too, Avery? Okay. The uh, disciples say to Jesus, it is way too hard to get into heaven. How is anybody ever supposed to get into heaven? Right? And Jesus says, with God, all things are possible. All things are possible. So... Just like Miss Heather was able to show you where that joker was so that you could, you know, all get a prize, when we follow God, everything is possible. And God actually has given us the secret to get into heaven. Did you know that? Do you love Jesus? Do you believe in Jesus? You did it! It's that easy. That is it. We, when we listen to God and we follow God, he points us in the right way and we get to heaven just because we love Jesus. It is that easy. Can you believe that? It's great news. 
Okay, let's say a prayer. Lord, we just thank you so much for sending your son, Jesus. Help us remember, Lord, that he is the way to get to you. It's that easy. It's not that hard. Help us to have faith that we can be um, followers of Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. Good morning, everyone, and for all those watching at home. This is the time in our service for us to share our prayers and our joys and concerns. Uh, on our list this week, uh, we'd like prayers for the family of Job Ballou, who passed away last week. His services will be held at Asbury in Allen on October 16th at noon. I'd also like to refer you to page four of the uh, bulletin and for everyone who, there who's on the prayer list. In addition to that, the others that we normally pray for are um, people with the, for the whole per coronavirus pandemic, for our nation, for victims of natural disasters, for aid workers and missionaries, for military, for those struggling with violence, for those on the margins of society, for those being treated for cancer and other chronic diseases, for all in need of healing and peace, and for those things on our own hearts. And I would like to lift up Ruth Campbell, our, our own Ruth. Um, she had recovering from, so, <clears throat> from shoulder surgery this week, and she's doing okay. So Calvin will now take the microphone. And well, this Wednesday, I am due to have a total knee replacement surgery. So prayers that that goes well, because I'm more anxious over my knee than my hip was. Um, just prayers for one of my friend and one of my friends and her family. Her mother passed away from brain cancer last week, and she's doing not that great. And neither is her family. Thank you, Calvin. Um, so Melissa Graham was in the hospital this week, and she's asked for prayers. She uh, has some blood circulation problems, but she is home. And then also my dad's good business partner, Harrison Langler, and my boss for 10 years. Uh, passed away this past week, 89, and uh, he was a good man. So. i like to pray for the members of Asbury to um, console me for American Parkinson disease. We had uh, two joys this weekend on... Friday. Oh. <laughs> Friday. <laughs> Friday, our granddaughter, um, Charlie, was born. Just a long time getting out. Um, thank you. And then on Saturday, our son Jeff and his girlfriend became engaged. Congratulations. Yeah. Anyone else? I'll use that. That works. Um, a couple things. Uh, number one is I just want to invite you all to look at your prayer list on page four. And if there are any updates from the people listed there, please put that down on your connection card and drop it in, your, in the offering basket. That would be much appreciated. We're trying to do an update on that prayer list uh, because we haven't really worked on it much over the summer and we want to try to get it squared away and make sure we're praying for, for those people we need to. So uh, if you could please do that, that would be much appreciated. Uh, and especially folks at home, if you could send us an email or shoot us a note, that would be great too. And then um, also want to pray for a friend of Asbury who's um, got a health issue going on right now and is in the hospital. So we just want to pray for that person. So thank you. Anyone else? So 
bow our, <coughs> excuse me, let's bow our head for prayer. Father, as we go into the world each day, we ask your patience for those we find challenging to remember you are by our side for those hard moments in our life, to follow the path you've laid out for us, to show your love and caring to all we encounter, and to be genuine in our love to others the way your son taught us through his living, his teaching, and the universal prayer he taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day we have daily bread, and we give us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Continue to invite people into relationship with Jesus Christ. Won't you join us in this mission in your giving today? Would you please pray with me? Holy God, you continue to bless our lives in many intrinsic and intangible ways. When our financial gifts are used to support mission and ministry, we see other people blessed in very tangible ways. Our desire is to place you first in our financial decision-making. May this offering be a time when we do place you first, and when we are grateful for the opportunity to support mission and ministry in your name. We pray in the name of the one in whom all things are possible. Amen. Please come as you are led. Na 
gospel lesson today is Mark chapter 10, verses 17 to 31 in the New International Version. As Jesus started on his way, a man ran up to him and fell on his knees before him. Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Why do you call me good? Jesus answered. No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony. You shall not defraud. Honor your mother and your father. Teacher, he declared, all these I have kept since I was a boy. And Jesus looked at him and loved him. One thing you lack, he said. Go and sell everything you have and give it to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven, and then come follow me. As the man, at this, the man's face fell. He went away sad because he had great wealth. And Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, how hard it is for the rich to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were amazed at his words. But Jesus said again, children, how hard is it to enter the kingdom of God? It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were even more amazed and said to each other, well, then who can be saved? And Jesus looked at them and said, with this man, this, with man, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible with God. And Peter spoke up, we have left everything to follow you. Truly, I tell you, Jesus replied, no one who has left home or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or fields for me and the gospel will fail to receive a hundred times as much in this present age. Homes, brothers, sisters, mothers, children, and fields along with persecutions in the age to come eternal life. But many who are first will be last and the last will be first. This is the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. Let's take a moment to, to be in prayer together as we are gathered in this place. Holy One, we are so amazed and grateful that we are welcomed into this place. We are invited to come and worship you together on this sacred ground. We ask for your Holy Spirit to fall fresh upon us and give us love and joy and wisdom and insight. Bless us as we seek you through our journey towards generosity. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. So this... Sunday is the introduction to a brand new worship series called the Generosity Challenge. It is part of our generosity campaign for 2021, and we are going to start with gratitude. That is the G that we start with. If this is a journey, then we need a guide, don't we? We need something to help point us towards where we are heading. And so if you think of a GPS as a tool to get from one place to another— God has given us a GPS to help get us towards generosity, and it starts with the G in gratitude, the P in prayer, and the S in sealed in faith. And so that's going to be, just as Brooke mentioned in the announcements this morning, going to be the track that we take over the next couple of weeks. And so as we enter into that, um, you will be receiving a pledge card in the mail this week. We hope that you pray about uh, your giving, because that is part of what we are called to do when we are generous. But it is not simply what we are called to do. So let's think about our generosity holistically. And specifically, let's start with gratitude. So 
In addition to our worship time together on Sunday mornings, there's also a Bible study taking place at 7 o'clock on Thursday nights, as Brooke mentioned in the announcements as well. Uh, And you are invited to come and join us as we take the generosity challenge. On Thursday, we talked a lot about um, the premise of the first chapter, which we kind of skipped over as we came into the worship series. And, and the premise was is that we are born to be generous. We are born to be generous. And we went kind of back and forth because there is some element of nature versus nurture in our generosity, right? Certainly, if you think about a small child, and this is one of the examples that was used in the DVD that we watched on Thursday night. Uh, a mom was talking about her son, and when he was first born, he would go pick up a toy when he first learned to walk, and he would bring it to her and give it to her. He'd pick up something else and bring it over and give it to her. And he'd pick up something else and bring it over and give it to her. And then after about age two, two and a half, he'd pick something up and go mine and walk the other direction. So there is something in er- inherent to us that causes us to grab on and hold on to And that is the desire for survival, right? We need resources to survive. And we go out and we find those resources that allow us to live wholly and totally. But beyond that that we need to survive, what do we do with the extra that comes to us? And that was kind of the question. There is a nurture aspect to this. Clearly, we are born to be generous. The image of God that resides within us is one of generosity because God is is generous. God created us. God gave us everything that we have. God walks with us every day. God is generous. And that image of God living within us invites us to be generous as well. And the first step on the journey towards generosity begins, just like a journey begins with that first step, the first step begins with gratitude. With gratitude. Gratitude is an important part of our makeup. And so as you're reflecting on gratitude, I want you to think about something. Many of you have probably heard of a lot of studies that have been done in the past 10 years or so around gratitude and our brains, the psychology of gratitude. When we are gracious, when we live in gratitude, it does a couple of things for us. It is a counterbalance, first of all, to the toxic emotions that are oftentimes a plague upon us during times of trial. So right now we are living in a time of extreme polarization. There are people on the left and on the right, um, up or down, left or center, or, you know, it, it, we're all over the place. And so if we turn on the news, there's probably a story on there that at some point in time over the past week made you angry. Or... Maybe you were driving in traffic and somebody cut you off and it made you angry. Or something else happened that that got your righteous indignation up and you were angry about something. So I want you to, to pull that into the forefront of your memory. Think about what, what has really got your goat right now. And as you reflect on that, I want you to think about something else that may have happened in the last week or two that you are grateful for. A phone call, a note... Somebody showed up unexpectedly, something happened, an event, there's a person in your life that you, you talked to, that you were grateful for that conversation. Think about that thing that you are grateful for now, whatever it might be. And if your brain works like just about every other human's brain, as you think about that thing you are grateful for, you should feel the anger kind of melting away. You see, it is almost impossible for us to hold on to anger when we are in an attitude of gratitude. Which is one of the invitations that God makes over and over again to invite us into gratitude because God knows, by virtue of our creation, that we can't hold on to all that stuff when we are grateful. And gratitude does a couple other things. It helps us recognize what we do have and what what blessings have been poured upon us. And then it even goes so far as to rewire our brains. Our neural pathways are reconfigured when we live into gratitude. So if you grew up saying a blessing over your meal every night and being grateful for what God had given to you, that probably continues to be a part of your routine and what you do now. And that gratitude continues to inform the way that you see 
the world. And hopefully you see it in the eyes of blessing and gratitude. Certainly Paul did, even through all the stuff Paul went through, right? There's a part of the scriptures where Paul recounts the times he's been beaten and flogged and thrown in jail and this and that's happened. And then he says, count it all as joy because I am blessed to be a servant of the risen Lord. Paul is making a different plea here in 2 Corinthians. And so to put this passage in context where we hear that very familiar passage, God loves a cheerful giver. Paul is, in the eyes of scripture, making the very first fundraising appeal in the church. Paul's asking for money. And he's doing this in a letter to the Corinthian church because the church in Jerusalem is suffering immensely. He's actually going around to all the churches that he knows. And if you, if you look in some of the letters, there are pleas in other places in the New Testament where Paul is asking for money to go to Jerusalem to help the church. But here is his longest and most eloquent plea for money. Paul's asking for the church to give financially to support the people in Jerusalem. It would be great if they could send food. It would be great if they could send the other resources that are in need. But those didn't travel well back in the first century. And so Paul's asking specifically for money because that's easy to take and to give and to utilize in that space. And Paul says so much about what gratitude does to inform generosity, right? God loves a cheerful giver. That cheerfulness comes from generosity, comes from gratitude. And then, you know, there in verse 10, Paul says something that hits close to home. For God, uh, not verse 10, um, verse 12. So two good things result from the ministry of given, right? Two good things. The needs of the believers in Jerusalem are met. So first of all, when you give, someone receives and it meets a need that they have. That is good. But also that the church will joyfully express their thanks to God. So the gratitude that you experience and the generosity that you provide results in gratitude somewhere else as well. It becomes a cycle and not simply a cycle that is circular. This is a cycle that is a spiral that ascends towards heaven. Because God loves a cheerful giver. God loves that we share with one another. And Jesus speaks a little bit about that in our lectionary gospel reading from today when he talks to this young man who wants to know what else must be done to gain eternal life. So clearly, when he comes to Jesus, he's doing all the right stuff. But something's missing. Somebody doesn't come to Jesus and ask, what must I do to inherit eternal life unless they're worried about receiving it to begin with. That they feel like there's something missing. And, you know, he says, good teacher. And Jesus recommends that God is good and that really that we need to focus that, that thought about goodness on God and that what God gives us is the goodness that works in us. What must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus says, follow what you have been taught. Oh, I've done that. Wonderful. But there's one thing getting in the way. Go and sell everything and then come and follow me. Ooh, that's hard. Go and sell everything and then come and follow Jesus. Now, this passage has been reviewed and circled around and thought about over the 2,000 years since it was written down. What is our response to this passage as followers of Jesus? If we're going to go follow Jesus, what are we called to do? Well, I think Jesus is inviting this specific person into this specific call at this specific time. Now, certainly there are aspects of this call that are applicable to all of us. We are all called to live in gratitude and to be generous. And when we do that, we are embracing the gift of salvation that God gives to us because nobody can give us salvation except for God through Christ. And so as receivers we are in turn then called to be gracious and generous and to give willingly of ourselves. Now, do we need to have enough resources to survive? Absolutely. I think Christ would say, we need to take care of ourselves and one another with all that we have and to be generous with the gifts that God has provided so that we in turn 
can share those and help other people be generous as well. So this invitation with this rich young person is really a call for all of us to live in gratitude and to be generous. And, and this conversation with the disciples goes on to expand on that. Jesus is reminding them that they have given everything to follow him. And so what are you worried about, Peter? What are you worried about? But there's that invitation for us to live into that as well. I want you to take a moment to think about the most generous person that has been a major part of your life. So think about that person that modeled what generosity looked like for you. Some person that you are really grateful has been a part of your life. I mean, there's a number of people in my life, but one that I always go back to is my, my grandmother, my mother's mother. She modeled for me what it meant to be gracious. There was no person that my grandmother walked up and talked to who was a stranger. And if someone said something to her about a struggle or something going on, she would sit and listen until they were finished. She gave abundantly of her time and of her attention to meet people where they are and to listen to what they had to say. And if there was something that she could do to help them, she would find a way to do that. And it modeled for me a way to be in relationship with others. Who is that person for you that taught you what it meant to be generous? That person that might give the shirt off their back, that might spend all the time that was necessary with someone else to walk with them through what was going on, that person that, that was willing to give those last two copper coins when they came into the temple in your own life? What made them that way? You ever thought about that? Why were they as generous as they were? I bet it was because they lived in gratitude. I bet it was because that they lived a life where they knew they had enough. And if they had enough, then they were willing to give what needed to be given away to help someone who didn't have enough. I bet it was because it was a generous heart that resided within them, a generous spirit that came from that image of God that they were created with. All of us have that inherently in us. The question is, are we willing to take a step out in prayer and in faith to allow that gratitude to become generosity. Because generosity is the response to gratitude within us. And so over the next couple of weeks, we'll be exploring prayer, we'll be exploring faith, and we'll be exploring generosity. Praise be to God and amen. I invite you to stand as you are able. I'm going to invite the praise team to come forward at this point. Friends, hear these words of blessing as you prepare to go from this place. Go now and make a name for yourselves through gratitude and generosity. And may God be your defender and provider. May Christ Jesus be your guide and savior and may the Holy Spirit make you rich in faith and love and merciful in action. Amen.